<laughs> Bomb. <laughs> He's got like a jailhouse syndrome. He has to act tough and then he like goes up wagging his tail. <laughs> So I'm Morgan Mason and this is Bomber. We're down here at Buena Vista right next to the Arkansas River, uh, just kind of hanging out and doing the interview. Back uh, a couple years ago, I was just hitting, an hitting random animal shelters, uh, just looking for the right dog, um, kind of finding one. And I was at the Aspen Animal Shelter and Bomber was the last dog I looked at there and uh, just kind of fell for him. The, uh, the owner there told me I could take him out for the weekend and we already had a camping uh, trip set up and after that there's no giving him back. He's the happiest dog I've ever seen. He's always excited to do something, always ready for an adventure. He's a great road tripping dog. So I was hanging out in Aspen, uh, the buddy of mine's, we were having a barbecue and there just happened to be a dog over on the other side of the road um, and Bomber just bolted for him and Bomber actually hit the truck. <laughs> he T-boned the truck and ended up dislocating his, one of his hips um, and we, took him in, he was looking pretty bad, he seemed like he smacked his head pretty bad, he was just out of it. Took him into the, uh, to the animal ER in Basalt, they found out that he had a third degree AV block, and what that means is the bottom half of his heart wasn't beating, and then that's when they referred me to the, uh, to the cardiologist and took me down. So Bomber was seen by an emergency hospital in Aspen in the emergency doctor that saw Bomber recognized that not only did he have a lot of other injuries with his accident, but he also had third degree atrioventricular block. And so they recognized that that was a emergent situation um, and referred him here from Aspen to be managed. And so when Bomber got here, he'd been hit by the car four days prior, so he wasn't freshly wounded. But he was in pain, he was pretty down. I mean, I think the combination of pain and his leg and his heart rate. Um, but he still, like any good Labrador, gave us great tail wags and it was just sweet as could be. And so we evaluated him and that's when we found the blood clot inside of his heart and found that we couldn't do the pacemaker as we wanted to right away. And it was a problem for Bomber because his leg was really uncomfortable and we couldn't really address his leg until we had addressed his heart. For chronic management of a clot, we put them on Plavix. And Plavix is a drug that is used often in human medicine. And it's a drug that works on platelets to inhibit platelets sticking together. And so it wouldn't do a lot to break down an existing clot. But the idea is that the body in this young, healthy dog is gonna break that clot down on its own. And what the Plavix will do is keep it from getting bigger. And so for his discharge from the hospital, before we could place a pacemaker, we really had to make sure that clot was gone. And so he was discharged on Plavix. It was, it was really tough, um, really tough for me to hear. It's like, nobody ever wants to hear that with their pet or animal. And um, I mean, Bomber's my first real pet, my first dog. And so I knew that I had to do whatever to get him back up and going, because I didn't want that to be a failure or let him down, so made that happen. So yeah, Dr. Sanderson initially put him on the, the anticoagulants and was managing him for the, the thrombus in his heart or the clot in his heart. And so by the time I saw him, that really had essentially resolved. And so we basically at that point, you know, we're, we're putting the pacemaker in. So we put a, make an incision over the vein in the neck and pass the pacemaker into the heart um, and make sure that it, everything is positioned appropriately and then attach the generator, which is what fires the pacemaker. It's a minimally invasive procedure um, and it takes less than an hour. So the generator deploys a, a voltage or an electrical activity that goes down the pacemaker lead and then stimulates the muscle at the tip of the pacemaker. And that electrical stimulation of the muscle is what goes through the heart and causes the heart to contract. The battery life on these, it's like five to eight years typically, um, which for most of our pets, by the time they acquire these bradyarrhythmias is, is enough time. Cardiologists place them in different locations, but it's usually either on the neck or on the back of the neck. Um, somewhere in that location is usually where they end up being, but they're, in the, they're just under the skin. Nobody makes pacemakers for dogs at this time. 
so they are made for human use. This particular pacemaker was donated by St. Jude, and we have been really blessed with their support to be able to help us place pacemakers in pets, because if we had to purchase the pacemakers, it would make it really cost prohibitive for pet owners, and so because of their generous donations, we're able to place them at a, a much, much reduced cost over what it would be in human medicine. Basically, since he's got the pacemaker in, his quality of life, I think has gotten better. I mean, he's able to do anything and everything, really, that he did before. I still take him out on bike rides. He still swims in the river. He's, he's super active. Bomber's a great, like a poster child for a pacemaker because he's young and healthy and lives such an active lifestyle. He can go back to his old stuff and he can win races and race and races and bound along in the snow with Morgan and feel great rather than if he hadn't been treated, he wouldn't be able to do all those things. I think that's the, the neatest thing about the story is just that really the teamwork involved in getting Bomber to where he is and um, so I think definitely Morgan is an exceedingly dedicated owner and he loves Bomber to pieces. Um, unfortunately, at the time point when this happened, Morgan was a college student and didn't really have a lot of resources. And the Humane Society of Aspen um, loved Bomber so much that they really financially supported the hospitalization here and all of the management that we had to do here as well as the pacemaker implantation. So life without Bomber would be slow and boring. He just, a bundle of excitement, it's ridiculous. With me, Bomber is like, a, he's my family. Um, and that's just something you've got to do for your family. Um, just get them the right treatment and just make sure they're healthy and it brings you so much joy, it's ridiculous.